Hey, what's going on guys? My name is GamesLinks and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program today with the Beyond Home Planet mod. And uh, here we are on the launch pad. Uh, this is a ship which is bound for Ash and uh, we are setting off pretty much immediately. Um, but what I've decided to do is I've decided to skip building this one because I just threw it together in the uh, VAB just then. And um, this is our first, hopefully, uh, hopefully, a manned landing on Ash. Now, uh, for those of you who do play Beyond Home, Ash is the, uh, I think it's the largest moon in the system. Uh, I know Lua is quite, it's, it's roughly the same size of, as Lua, however it doesn't have an atmosphere. And uh, if you watched episode 2, you saw that I used parachutes for Lua. And <laughs> none of those are being used here. <laughs> um, I have made a couple of changes to Ash. Nothing that would affect Delta V, but um, some changes to the surface. There are some new terrain scatters on on the surface that aren't in the current build, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, so uh, something, something else you might have noticed is that we're using a five engines on the uh, on the lower stage. This is the biggest rocket we've made yet. And there's a good reason for that because Ash requires an awful lot of Delta V. To, uh, to get to, to land on, and to get back from. And it's also the furthest moon out in the system. Thankfully it's not inclined as much as Armstrong, I don't think. Yeah, it's pre pretty much a flat circular orbit. Uh, so it shouldn't be too much of a challenge to get to, the only the only trouble is it's, it requires a lot of Delta V. Anyway, on this lovely morning on the road, we are, I think, approaching our 50,000 target. Uh, not quite, 34,000. It's looking alright. I'm not using full throttle because, as you might have seen in the first episode, I think I started overheating. <laughs> I was going way too fast in the lower atmosphere. But I think this is a really good gravity turn. Now we're about to get to our apple apsis, so I might just throttle down a little bit more and let the gravity turn do the rest. Right, here we are approaching Apoapsis, probably a little bit faster than I had uh, anticipated. There we go, we have an orbit. <laughs> 17 meters per second of delta V left. I'm just going to terminate the stage. Right, so there's our swivel engine. This is the stage that's actually going to do the landing, and now we have 2577 meters per second, which should be enough to land on Ash, and then we have the, the stage that comes home at the top here. So, um, that's a very nice view, actually, of the, the jettison stage there. Anyway, we need to plot a manoeuvre for Ash, and I'm actually going to do a manoeuvre for this one. I think it's 90 degrees, I think, but I can't remember because I don't, I don't normally go here. Yeah, it's fine. That is an interesting orbit that we're going to get. That's a slingshot and a half, that. Now, the reason for that is because Ash is really heavy and it's really far out. So its sphere of influence is uh, massive. <laughs> also, I did not manage to fix scatter. So um, for this episode, you will get the flickering oceans again. I'm gonna have to. I think I have posted it on the forum thread, but uh, yeah, I I wasn't able to fix it. This is gonna be quite a long burn. Uh, I think this stage is optimized for delta v more than thrust to weight. Those of you who have played Beyond Home in Sandbox, I'm not sure how many of you that might be, but have you tried flying between Fate and Destiny? Those, those are the two stars. Um, it's a crazy experience. I wouldn't recommend flying between the two stars. It's... I wouldn't say it's buggy, because it works as, it's, as far as KSP is concerned, but I can't say it's the most um, reliable way to get a transfer to Kerbal. That is a strange orbit. I might have to correct that because I don't particularly want to be launching from the North Pole, but there it is, there's Ash in the distance over there. Now, it is a lava moon. <laughs> it is a, a very hostile moon. If you land in the lava, you will die. It does take a while. I think I've increased the actual rate that the lava heats your craft. For, I think it's about four times. Um, so yeah, I'd say just be careful when landing in the lava. You can do it. You can you can land in it, and you can get the science, but you can only land for. I think in the current version of the game, current version of Beyond Home, it's about a minute, something like that. Um, 
which is quite generous considering it's lava. I want to land near the lava but not in it. So preferably on a flat area. Now we're travelling at 1100 meters per second and we might not be able to land on this stage. I do have more than enough delta V to kill my velocity. So maybe? But I honestly don't know. Now Ash rotates incredibly slowly so I don't have to really worry about uh, my trajectory in relation to the ground. So, I kind of want to land in somewhere around here, because it, it just looks a bit safer. Now this stage does actually have enough Delta V to land on, actually. I want to land here, but I'm not sure how dangerous that's going to be, because my suicide burns are not not the best at them. I might have to go up a little bit because I'm going to pass on top of this lava. And if I get here when I start killing my velocity, then uh, that's way too late. Anyway, I'm going to quick save here. I'm actually going to do a special quick save. Call it Ash 1. There we go. Just a slight detour in order to find them, because I wanted to show off the new new terrain featured that I'd made. So if I just uh, fly about a little bit, there's one, there's two. This one's going to be extremely close, there we go. Man, we managed to make it just just in time. Anyway, uh, so yeah, these buildings, they are a work in progress. They are definitely nowhere near what it's going to look like on release, but it's just worth taking a look at the general shape. So they are meant to be science labs, and this is meant to be like a rocket pad. You can't launch from there, you can land on them, that's their purpose. They were supposed to be like supply missions and all that, um, so you can land on them. And there's a science building, and it, the, the launch pad most of it's sort of done, but um, it's not very well textured. <laughs> the model's fine. The actual UV mapping, which is the technical term for what I believe, it's not brilliant. Anyway, here you can see the uh, the updated terrain textures. This is going to be really difficult to pull off. a landing because I I feel like this isn't very stable. Okay, we should be landed on the on the engine mount and I've quick saved it here just to make sure. Now if I disable the reaction wheels I really hope it stays. Because I'm I'm going to do some science and it's gonna involve getting out. Now we are going to make the long trek over to one of these buildings. Now RCS does work on Ash, but the amount that you need to stay in the air is ridiculous. So I'm gonna pin it and I'm just gonna fly over. See look at that, I just lifted it off about a second. And here we are, we're on the top of one of these nice little buildings. It is it's definitely in a work in progress, especially the textures. And there we go, we fell over, but it's fine. So just to get a better look at them, we've got the rocket pad here, and we've got the building here. Now the building needs the most work, the rocket pad, for the most part, is almost done. And you can see, if abandoned, consult manual. I just felt like that would be a nice thing to include. Now, the main reason I brought everyone over here is a little bit of exploration. So, for those of you who um, do exploration in Beyond Home, like say in sandbox or anything like that, you will. Uh, I'm going to hit the ground here. Oh well, this is why I needed my propellant because I need to be able to get up here. For those of you who do explore, might like, find some cool little secrets, and this is one of them. So I'm just going to go in here, and here we are. You will find that it does have an interior. What's inside? <laughs> Hello, me old chum. I'm not a gnelf. I'm not a gnoblin. I'm a gnome, and you've been gnomed. Yeah, you're welcome.
looking for that. I just thought that would have been a... It's a brilliant easter egg, I think. Um, for those of you who land near here, this will be in the final release, by the way. You, you're welcome. My horrible sense of humour. And here we are, back at the craft. Um, slight, nice little detail we did there, just to show off some of the new... The new buildings come in to Beyond Home. Now, they are going to be t uh, they are going to be a lot less frequent than this, but for development purposes and for recording this, I decided to just increase the frequency just so that I could show off that nice, pointless easter egg. <laughs> now, there are other easter eggs already in the mod. It's just it's one of the more obvious ones that people will find. And it is time to return back to Road. But yeah, just to get a sense of scale, you can probably land most things on there. Uh, I think it's around the size of one runway segment. And I haven't checked that at all, but it looks about right. <laughs> but it's just a nice little addition to Ash. Now, look, the story behind them is that Ash is very mineral rich, and so the Kerbals came here to mine it, to mine a lot of its resources, and basically to exploit it to make. Uh, more terraformers back when they were in operation which I mean some of them are still working now but you can see that some of them are also broken there are some broken terraformers that you can find uh, I was lucky enough in episode 2 to find non broken ones but uh, yeah um, but because they ran out of funds they, uh, they've stopped they've stopped using the facilities they all they all went home to road and uh, the whole Lua operation was cancelled. Well, not cancelled, but it was like put on hold like for a long time. And it looks like we're coming in just past a large mountain range. It's one of the largest mountain ranges on road, I think. Yeah. It's a huge mountain range. I would not like to have landed there. And it looks like, again, we're going for a water landing. Comment down below which which planet you want me to visit first, because the next episode we might be going into planetary. I think I've got enough science to unlock that. Um, but yeah, next episode we might be going into planetary, so your options are Hydrus, Scathe, and Other. <laughs> it's like, if you want me to go to the Kerbal system, like, no, that's not happening anytime soon. But uh, anything around Rude. So that would be Hydra's moon, Scathe's moons. So Hydra, Scathe, or other, let me know down below in the comments. Oh wow, that, that stage is really close to us. I, I was not paying attention to that. And it's parachute time. No, we're not actually that far off the land. It's nice, I suppose. And there's the other stage just landing in the water there. But overall, for a first mission to Ash, I deem that a success. So here we are back on road with the most stupid looking craft I've built this series and uh, basically we have to test these on an escape trajectory out of Lua and that's going to be great fun. Now I didn't sort out the rest of my stages, there we go. <laughs> this should actually get us off the ground this time. Uh, these two support engines, a bit, or support tanks, support engines, basically just for some control and um, thrust rate ratio would have been a little bit too low if I hadn't included them. And I actually want to get back in one piece. So again, we're going to go for quite a, a steep gravity turn. And uh, our sights are on Lua today. Now we might end up <coughs> we might end up landing on Lua again in a future episode because some of you may know there's a Kerbal Space Center there, um, which means you can it's it's space plane oriented, so rockets aren't so good for launching from Lua. Space planes are a lot better. Um, because I don't want it to be overpowered. I suppose you could launch a, a rocket from the runway, but there is a height limit. So, uh, some people might try to get past it, and if if you think well enough, you probably can. And that's rewarding in itself. That is definitely not going to get us an encounter of Lua. Let's try that one again. <laughs> so it's roughly 45 degrees, but I'm going to go for more 90 degrees. Which is fine, it'll still get us an encounter anyway. Because Lua, Lua's quite quite intrusive. You can get an encounter with Lua pretty much. Um, if you aim in the general direction of it, you'll get an encounter of it. So that's fine. 
Now, when we get close, I'm going to adjust the um, the periapsis just so that we skim the atmosphere. And that's going to be, that looks like it might be quite a nice view. But here we go, a nice view. Probably not going to see any terraformers because the mountains here are too low. But uh, let's let's do some science. So crew report. Yeah, nothing. <laughs> Uh, what I'm really concerned about is the materials bay. This should give give us a fair bit. Eh, ten. Not as much as some of the stuff that we did on Ash, but it's it's a start. And I didn't have any like barometer scans. And I didn't do an EVA report up here either. Wait, I did. <laughs> right then. Yay, now we're in escape trajectory and it's time to fire the most weird stage yet. Just as road comes over the horizon. <laughs> Beautiful. Ah, oh, this craft was definitely worth making just because it's stupid looking. And let's hope nothing goes wrong in range. Oh, we're gonna get another encounter with Lua. It wasn't what I was expecting, but fair enough. I mean, it's slowing us down a little bit more. Alright. And here's road. This bit looks quite familiar. I don't think I've landed here before, but it does look familiar. Are we near the KSC? Uh, no, we're on the complete opposite side of the planet. Never mind. I swear to God, if we're landing in the water again. <laughs> I don't think we are. I think we're safe from the water. Yeah, that stage it has some fuel in, <laughs> so it's gonna it's gonna hit the ground way before we do. I think you can still just about see it. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it on YouTube because the bit rate gets uh, horribly compressed. Now, it does help if I deploy the parachute, and there it is. It actually hit the ground over there. Not bad. Ah, we have quite a good view. Quite a good view of Rhodes Mountains. And again, a well-timed parachute, so that we don't have to wait ages, and uh, we're also not hitting the ground hard enough for us to explode. And here we are. We have landed at road yet again, but this time, a good view of the mountains. I think that, that's a nice screen to end on. Now, we only got 10 science from this mission, but it gave us some money from the contract, and that's always nice. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, Remember to leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next episode.